Hi hey guys, uh, my name is uh, Dennis Radin and uh, I work with uh, Robert in the same company called uh, Liberty Global, uh, Zigo, yeah, yeah, locals know it. And uh, today I would like to tell you a bit more about what we are doing in uh, Liberty Global in terms of uh, abstracting interface renderers uh, to get maximum performance and uh, some flexibility feature. And library I'm talking about called React Liberty. As, as you see, the slogan of our company is connect, discover, be free. And the slogan of a uh, library is connect, discover, be free to choose between WebGL, DOM, Canvas, or any other renderer. So uh, why do we need this flexibility? Because we develop for set of boxes and uh, every two years they change. So what do set of box? Uh, it's basically a small PC with a JavaScript-based operation system. So all UI is developed with JavaScript. All the screens, App Store, apps are also JavaScript. All UI is JavaScript. So it's a big piece of front-end code. And it's developed with React. And uh, not only, but yeah, now migrating completely to React and Redux. So this, was, this is how it looks like now. It's uh, this size of box, and uh, it's constantly changing. Every two years, we get a new box. It's smaller, smaller, and smaller. And a new one is going to be this size of. But nobody knows what kind of operation system or front end is going to be it driven by. So, what happens if the next one is going to be Android? Do we lose? All this half millions line of code? No, we don't want to do that because it's really a lot of effort with many developers, and uh, we'd like to be flexible in that. So, how to achieve this flexibility by abstracting renderer? And uh, it's easy to achieve by implementing just three kind of nodes: container, image, and text node. So, once you have them both implemented in WebGL, DOM or Canvas or SVG, you can combine them and make a different kinds of applications, still uh, keeping uh, all your business logic behind these visual abstractions. Uh, that's how React Liberty uh, application looks like. It's a React markup for the whole application. As you see, main tag is not capitalized. The rest is capitalized. It means these are React Liberty tags, and main is an entry point to React Liberty. So you can have a DOM application and then at some point you start React Liberty code and it injects at the same, at the proper place on the screen and correct place on the screen. And then, yeah, it's an abstract set of components to make our logic uh, portable from platform to platform. As you see, we have some divs which are basically containers from our abstractions images and lists. Lists are important because on TV you build everything from lists. Uh, carousels everywhere, vertical, horizontal, list of lists and so on. So yeah, declarative means portable. And uh, yeah, we do this kind of uh, React tree. We also use React Motion to keep uh, animations uh, declarative. It's cool. Uh, but the problem is that uh, these boxes, they are comparable to iPhone first and browser process have only 250 megs of RAM, which is not that, not that a lot. Uh, to be honest, any, any mobile these days have way more uh, CPU and uh, yeah. So we, we, we try to keep it really performant and uh, we, we, we do a lot of tricks on how to manage renderings during animations and react to avoid uh, update of, uh, updating the whole tree. Uh, I would not fall in details on that right now, uh, but yeah, if you go to repository, you can uh, see that it's open source now, probably. Uh, and uh, we use WebGL where we really need performance and we need to save memory. So why WebGL saves us memory? It could it it could be weird, like WebGL is graphics and uh, uh, this kind of stuff engine. But if you think about that, every DOM node, if you ever seen it in Inspector. Uh, it has a lot of properties, like hundred, hundreds of properties, hundreds and hundreds, and it takes a lot of memory. So when we started to benchmark, 
we found, uh, really, to be honest, we benchmark really a lot. So uh, because we care of performance, of how much RAM it takes, and so on. And yeah, so we've got a lot of insights uh, to, to uh, uh, improve our system. So uh, yeah, we found that if you build application with DOM, with the same amount of nodes, a DOM objects eat more than a half of our memory uh, footprint, and uh, WebGL is way more lightweight because yeah, it's uh, just simple sprites. They have graphic representation, not that many properties as DOM not have. So WebGL is also pretty performant. Uh, it's basically a reason for that. It's uh, uh, having a hardware acceleration on the same. Uh, ha who saw this video? How many people? One, two, three, four. Uh, okay, we can see it one more time. Uh, so yeah, this video is about difference between between CPU and GPU. This is how CPU works. So CPU draws everything pixel by pixel considering every move. And that's a GPU demonstration. So yeah, that's the difference uh, between uh, CPU and GPU. Uh, GPU makes everything is in batch. It's a uh, parallel processing, and it's uh, basically the same uh, technology which drives uh, modern uh, games. And uh, so basically, in browser, we have all this power which used to draw all these amazing uh, contemporary games like Star Wars, Unreal, and uh, yeah, it's really it's amazing. It's photorealistic, and we have access to the same power. In browser, so uh, we can use it and uh, make our applications way more performant. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's let's try uh, and see how performant uh, WebGL is. So let's uh, release bunnies. So we can assume that every every of these bunnies is a diff. So basically, it's textured surface. So it's a diff. So currently, there are two bunnies, and let's let's add some. So uh, we see 20,000 of divs animating, 30,000 of divs animating, 50,000 of bunnies, 70, 80, could you imagine 80,000 of animated divs at once? So no, it's probably not possible in, in DOM, but in WebGL you can do this kind of stuff and I have still 60 FPS. Uh, yeah, it's amazing, we can add more, it's, it's not the limit. It's not the limit at all. So yeah, WebGL is really performance. That, that's the reason why, why, why we use it and uh, why we try to build an abstraction. And uh, to yeah, there is a benefit for that. Oh, uh, that's basically it. And uh, it's how we approach uh, high performance applications in Liberty Global and uh, baggage. Uh, created for this three years, I'm in company is pretty, pretty solid. So at some point, uh, uh, I established a workshop called Challenge and Native. So if you're interested in getting more knowledge on how to build applications which are as performant to compete with native applications, not with React Native, no, but as uh, to create fast web applications, you can go to challengeandnative.com and uh, apply to workshops there, and uh, if uh, it's going to happen uh, near your place, 
you'll be invited and notified that yeah, in your city it's uh, going to happen. Oh, there are a lot of topics there. Loading optimization, JavaScript performance, working with memory, covering uh, SVG canvas and WebGL uh, benefits, and so on. Um, a lot of stuff. Full day workshop. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, see you again. Thanks.